Hello everyone and welcome to Lit Film Fest Live, where we discuss a classroom topic and a brand new book to go along with it to build a budding reading culture in your school. If your school library is open, at least, but we are dealing with some really interesting topics tonight, which is really relevant in these times. I'm Tim and we're looking at sadness through fiction, through a very particular book that will touch uh, and, and help you discuss um, sadness with your clasp and maybe particular um, points and particularly relevant in the minute. Fiction is certainly a really blank canvas to explore really important topics. Teachers use that all the time. And being in the middle of this pandemic, we know that uh, we not only use some of our pupils um, we'll not only see some of our pupils lose family members to COVID, but there are huge sw swathes of isolation in our children, which they have to endure when all this is over. We have all heard stories of how it's affected people's mental states in, at this time. And withdrawal is a really common one that I, I've, I've witnessed that in some of the children that I love and, and, and have taught and, and, and know very well that children have not had contact on a real daily, um, real daily basis with their friends and their educators and the people that they trust in their community. And they're seeing news and there's so much uncertainty and it's almost too much for them to take. Um, and it's difficult to know the impact that is going to be on this generation as previous generations haven't really experienced this. So it's really important to, to talk about these things. Without a doubt, it's going to be something that education will have to deal with is, is all sadness. Even on a basic scale, children on our, in our classes go through problems and have issues to deal with. Um, and we'll have to deal with it right now, of course, as we have such a community of teachers and pupils going through so much at the minute. So just with that as a, as a kind of context for what we're looking at, we're looking at sadness through fiction. And I'm, it, it gives me great pleasure to um, be joined with both illustrator and author tonight, Anne Booth, the, the author of uh, A Shelter for Sadness, and the illustrator, David Litchfield, who is the uh, illustrator for the book. Hi both, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. Great, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank awesome. you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, Tim. Well, I heard you were both alone and you needed a you, you needed something, someone to bubble with or join a support yeah. group with. <laughs> we need a hug, Tim, we need a hug. <laughs> We all do. I know. I know several thousand teachers who need a hug right, right this minute. Oh, gosh. And uh, would you like to tell me a bit about um, Shelter for Sadness and uh, you know how you wrote it and why you wanted to be involved with it, David, as well? Um, and, well and would you like? To I, I I went to a um, a talk at a, a church in Canterbury, and I can't remember what the talk was about. I think it was about prayer and um, emotions. I just remember that. Uh, Chris Chapman, who is the man who was giving the talk, just quoted um, from Etty Hillerson, who's um, a survivor of the... Well, no, she, she wasn't a survivor. She died in the Holocaust. And um, whilst she was under threat from the Nazis, she, she wrote a lot about her feelings, about her feelings of fear and her feelings of sadness. And um, she, he quoted from something that I thought was so beautiful. So and it's in the front of the book, so I'll just read it to you. It says, give your sorrow all the space and shelter in yourself that is its due. For if everyone bears grief honestly and courageously, the sorrow that now fills the world will abate. But if you do instead reserve most of the space inside you for hatred and thoughts of revenge, from which new sorrows will be born for others, then sorrow will never cease in this world. And if you have given sorrow the space it demands, then you may truly say, life is beautiful and so rich and so I was thinking about um there are sorrows that we all have that we can't change it's not then there are things you know when someone we love dies or some bad experience we have in childhood or in adulthood um sometimes you just can't cheer up and you know cheer up it's all going to be all right or it might never mm. happen sometimes it has happened and how do we manage to continue to live how do we manage to live and love and see the beauty of the world whilst we're still carrying this sorrow? And I thought what she said was, you know, give your sorrow the space and shelter was such a beautiful phrase that it made me want to write this poem. And then I was so excited that um, Templar liked it and that they said that they wanted David to illustrate it and I had already seen David's work and I was like wow I can't believe David will be illustrating this so it was amazing. So. 
I was very happy, not sorrow, not sorrowful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, 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 on that, David, actually, because you you um, actually wrote and illustrated the bear and the piano, which is a fantastic book, isn't it? What 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 drew you to this? How is that different to to um, what, what you previously done? Well, it's um, in fact my agent when she sent it sent me the manuscript uh, which she got from Templar. My agent actually said that in the email. She goes, "This is very different from what you're probably used to um, being presented with," and um, and that's what really what like really excited me really because it was just so different from anything i'd um i'd ever done but also anything it was different from anything i'd ever read really it was um mm. it was just such a poignant um really emotional you know the emotion was coming even from those early that you know that the early manuscript that i got sent you could really kind of see that this could be a very uh powerful and very important and very moving book and it's um i remember thinking you know th th i wish this was a book that i had when i was a child you know i i i, I never you know I, I loved the children's books that i read as a child um you know all the classics like raymond briggs and um uh well yeah the, the books that we all grew up with basically but um i never had something that really went this kind of this kind of uh, deep into uh, how children's kind of can uh, deal with emotions and 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 or or look at emotions, look at look at the you know look at the things that they're feeling, um, and kind of recognise that in a in a children's book. I think so. I, I really jumped at the chance. Really, as soon as I read it, I mean, the thing was, we, I, it came at a point when uh, I was already quite booked up with other projects. So it was a long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> long that. Old, long old gestation you know I, I was i was i was getting my fingers crossed that Anne and the team at templar wouldn't mind waiting a bit and thankfully they didn't and yeah uh, no it's great yeah no and then no, we no, did no. it was a long way which you know um we, we get which gave me more more time in a funny way to kind of really think about the the artwork and think about how i could how i could do this and i was just so excited to make a start and then i was pleased that i eventually could yeah well, uh, well, also a big thank you uh, for the giveaway tonight because we will be giving away one copy of A Shelter for Sadness. When did it, when was it released? When did it come out? It's not it's actually not out, out yet. It's, it's a brand new, it's, it's out in on the 21st, right? I think. Yeah, I 21st of January. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is beautiful. And and I, I do say it's really good for Key Stage 1, but actually you would easily be able to read this to um, a key stage two as well, because it's, you know, a simple message. It's a perfect assembly book for dealing with big problems. And particularly after everything all children have been through, I can see it as ideal for dealing with the sadness that every community has been through. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful, beautifully written to and also to, to show that. So yeah, if, if you do, would like a chance of winning a copy of this, please do um, like, comment or share the video and you're in with a chance. And the competition closes at midnight. Uh, everything closes at midnight next <laughs> next next week um, to, uh, to be in with a chance of winning those. And also, why, why just going off the, the, tel the title really, why is building a sh shelter a method um, to live with sadness? Why did, why did you choose um, that phrase, Anne? Or what well, drew you to wanting it? Right well, it was Effie Hillison's um, idea, concept, and I think it was a beautiful one because um, we need somewhere safe. You know, people mm. talk about safe spaces to talk in, and that's making it more concrete. The whole idea of um, we've got somewhere that no one can... No one can say, no, you're not really sad or that didn't really happen or just forget about it and move on. You have to mm. have somewhere that you can, you know, people people do that when they put pictures of someone they love on in a in a frame on a on a wall. That's a shelter for their sadness that that person they've loved is, is has gone, but they're still looking there. You know, you, you people make little shrines or um, it's just a natural human thing. And inside us, I think we need to honour our own sadness and give it shelter. You know, protect it from 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 make from laughing at it or burying it or being cynical about it. You know, or, or being ashamed of it. Even you know, saying, "Oh, I shouldn't be sad about that. Um, I should move on." You know, so I think it's it's a human need to recognise that it's okay to be sad as well as happy and hopeful and. You can many emotions can exist at the same time. I think. Hmm. Um, why did you decide to make 
sadness of character. It's a big part of the book, isn't it? What, what made you want to personify that? Well, I think it was, again, it was, you know, I, I'm not sure. Etty Hillison mentioned sadness and it just came naturally to me that it would be a character, I think. Mm. When you write or illustrate children's books, you tend to tend to create characters from abstract ideas, really. Um, and um, yeah, I was thinking, who would you be sheltering? But I didn't, it's a very exciting working with an illustrator because I didn't really know in my head what sadness looked like. So, you know, I I, I knew there was going to be a build, but I didn't know how the illustrator, how David was going to, to, to um, draw sadness. So I was, it's very exciting seeing your words illustrated. So it's not like nothing else. It's fantastic. Well, I mean, I didn't know either. That's that's one of the things because it was such a long process of like getting the getting the manuscript and then getting these other projects done. It was always in the back of my mind, you know, that that kind of challenge of what what would sadness look like if it was like visualized. And I was kind of coming through up with these all all over ideas. Unfortunately, my sketchbook that I did all this in is in locked away in my studio, which we can't get to at the moment because of lockdown. Um, but I drew all kinds of things, really. I drew very kind of scary looking uh, things, like almost kind of, like I remember the first drawing I did uh, was of this kind of very kind of dark, kind of ghostly looking creature. And it wasn't a creature, it was like a proper horror film kind of thing. Um, and then I just kind of, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of put myself in the head of a, of a small child. Um, you know, what would they do if they were asked to visualize um, sadness? And I just kind of, first of all, I drew these kind of very kind of, a very very childlike kind of characters, almost like Mr. Men in a funny way, <laughs> uh, you know, different shapes and things. And then I just thought, well, you know, if this, if a child's feeling this emotion and is feeling this confusion, uh, you know, let's just scribble. Let's just kind of do a, yeah. a kind of a scribble. It's it's yeah. a mixed up kind of you know all these different thoughts and feelings and emotions yeah. going into the character, um, and it's a muddle. It's a muddle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which actually going back to the Mister Men, there is Mister Messy, right? And uh, yeah, I guess yeah. in the back of my mind, I might have had Mister Messy in mind, where he's just literally a scribble. Um, yeah. And I just thought that would that when I did that, I just thought that's kind of perfect, right? Because it's um, it's kind of it's something like that a child might draw, you know. And imagine, you know, I imagine myself as a, as a six year old or a seven year old, just saying, "Look, just try and draw how you're feeling right now," and yeah. you know, remembering that kind of you can't articulate what you're feeling, you can't because you know you just you you just can't. And but I've got a pen and I've got a, you know, <laughs> and I'm just going to scribble and I'm just going to make yeah, a mess. Yeah. yeah. And I just. That that could work. That could that could do it really. Yeah. But um, scribble by nature has energy to it, doesn't it? But yeah, it's quite soft as well. In in the book, it's, it, it's not a monster. I think you're right. We do, you know, and, and you know, we often turn our sadness into monsters that we try to shut yeah. away, don't we? But this yeah. one's something you can live with, and there is a soft, like childlike nature to him. So yeah, so I do like yeah. that. Yeah, totally. And uh, I sort of wanted him to sort of almost change in a way from in some pictures you can kind of see him as a as a kind of different version of the child he's got a very childlike he or she, she has got the sadness has yeah. got a very childlike quality to him but then i also thought you know sometimes he would he would come across as sort of an, an, an adult a grown-up yeah. like there's some some there's some bits on this page in fact when i was drawing them i, I you know i was i was I don't mind telling you, you know, you do kind of, you, you put a lot of your, yourself into these into these books um, as a writer and as an illustrator, I think. You spend a lot of time with these characters. And yeah. particularly during these ones, uh, something like that where he's kind of just sitting and they're just yeah. kind of really, dead. in fact, there's another, there's another uh, image where they're just kind of sitting on the log. And it just sort of reminded me of, you know, sometimes, you know, when, oh, that one, yeah. when you've, when you've had a, a bad day uh, yes. or, your, or your mum or your dad has had a bad day and they're just really grumpy and yes. you just sit with them in silence and yes. no one says anything, but you're just kind of there with each other. Yes. And, it, you know, drawing it brought back a lot of those memories that you kind of store at the back of your head because they're not nice to think about, you know, when your mum's been arguing with your dad or, you know, something your, your mm -hmm. older brother 
smashed a window or something yeah. and it just starts a huge family argument i mean i'm talking from personal experience now <laughs> and then there's just those moments where you go and sit in the living room with your mum and no one says anything and it's you know there's something in the air there and yeah. you're kind of grateful that she's there and she's grateful you, that you're there but you don't need to say anything basically and so yeah for me that's what that's kind of where where kind of the the, the personality of sadness kind of comes from really um yeah yeah it's great and um, what, what do you hope children both take away um from about dealing with their sadness from both story and illustration um well i i, I hope that i hope they accept it's okay to be sad you know and that maybe that they will understand that sometimes when they think they're really angry or um you know there's those pictures that um you when they're angry or noisy or they're quiet that they're nothing there's nothing wrong with them they're not bad they're not bad children for wanting to suddenly go Rah! or or go very quiet or curl mm. up there's nothing bad in them it's just that they're sad and sometimes that's the right that's a normal response to things that are sad. And it's not normal to be happy when sad things are happening. So it's okay. They've got to like, you know, honor that and and not blame themselves for being sad. Just yeah. let them just let look after the sadness, not try and squash it down or or pretend it doesn't exist, but also give it a safe place so that they can then go off and be happy, you know, that they can do other things, that they're not busily always fighting it because I think if you try to pretend you're not sad it takes up all your energy mm. trying to be sad but if you just admit that you are I mean I like um so I I definitely had a difficult childhood and there were quite lots of um there were some tragedies in my childhood and my parents my mother wasn't very well and there were lots of things so I do understand what it's like to be sad as a child but just as um as an adult you know uh, after I've written this book and everything, um, you know, last weekend I was in such a—I think it was the lockdown and everything. I was so cool. I, I don't. I normally get on. You know, I'm, my husband and I don't. We get on very well. He's a lovely, gentle, laid-back man. And I was so like, we have a puppy. That's the cause of a bit of stress. And so I got really grumpy with him about something about the puppy. And um, I was really cross. And then I felt really horrible inside. And then it was um. I suddenly burst into tears and realized it was really I was sad, but I was being cross and grumpy and miserable and bad tempered. But really, what I needed was to cry. And um, yeah. I thought oh, I should have read my own book, really. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself, David? What do you hope children take from the illustration? Well, no, I, absolutely, just um, the same as I'm really, just that you know, it's okay to, to fit, have these feelings, you don't need to. You don't need to bury them. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, uh, the boy in the book, he, he accepts that he's sad. And yes, he, you know, yes, he kind of, you know, he builds the, the sadness a shelter. Um, but that's not to say he's trying to hide it away. He's kind of, you know, he's, he's it's there. He knows it's there. He can go visit the sadness whenever he wants. The sadness can, you know, come and uh uh be with him and just just acceptance that these feelings are natural and they are uh real and wow they're a massive part of childhood you know the, the saying is that you know the childhood is is you know that will be the greatest years of your life but i remember mm. being having awful awful days during, yeah, during absolutely uh, absolutely and they don't have to be big tragedies either they're just like you know really yeah. awful things like having the wrong socks when everyone else has got <laughs> different socks or i don't know you know there's really? just weird, or you're you know it doesn't have to be even people dying it can just be losing something or just feeling like you just you know i don't know look just smallest of things someone i remember helping out at a school and a little girl bursting into tears because another girl wouldn't lend her her rubber you know but that was a oh. real she was absolutely in floods of tears and you know it was a genuine sadness that the other girl was being mean and wouldn't lend to the rubber and i think, yeah. and I think to process that as well is important for children isn't it to, to, yeah. to be in their sadness to understand it makes them live with it and and and, and keep living yeah and yeah. also i think there's been too much said oh well in my opinion anyway there's been sometimes perhaps it's it is a good thing in in some cases but 
So I've heard the use of the word resilience misused a lot. Mm. And I think sometimes when people talk about children being resilient, it just means don't tell me that you're sad, you know, yeah. have a up upper lip and uh, just take it on the chin and be all cheery and uh, don't moan and complain and just, you know, soldier on. And yeah. uh, I don't think that's resilience. I think that's damaging. I think yeah. if you're going to be resilient, you have to recognise your sadness and honour it. Absolutely. Um, we just had a few comments. Uh, Emily saying, sounds lovely yet poignant. I think that's nice. That's a lovely word to, to talk about the, yeah. the kids' book because it is, isn't it? Poignant book. What a great duo. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also sounds uh, like a great book to share with my class during lockdown. And that's an important point that it is. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't write it for lockdown, did you? But it's no, very no. applicable at the minute. So. Well, I think that's also a, a kind of ties in with that but also ties in with the last question I, I i really love the fact that we don't we don't really find out why the boy in the story is sad it's it's yeah. he, he's just he is just sad he's just got some you know and i think that's quite good because then kids kids who read it they'll be able to you know they'll be able to say well i'm sad because you know something really horrible's happened in my family or one of my friends are, but then they could also say, you know, similar to what Anne was saying, you know, someone broke my pencil or something, you know. I don't yeah. think you should kind of assign why the, the boy is, is sad. And that, that was another reason why I jumped to the chance to do it, really, because I, I like the openness of that, the fact that kids could read their own story into this mm. boy, yeah. whatever that be. And and, we, and now we're in lockdown, you know, there's plenty of reasons to feel sad about things. So it's OK to feel sad. It's normal. How, Absolutely. How, do you, how do you both think that the fact that it's a picture book helps the audience to explore the emotions? Because and you talked, you said it was a poem, which I hadn't really clocked. Actually, um, I thought it was just like a very well, lo lovely story, actually. But it, nice to hear that it's a poem. How 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 do you both think adding illustrations to that really enhances those messages? Oh, I mean, immeasurably. It's just it, it is a. I mean, I said it's a poem, but I wrote it as a picture book text. And I, yeah. although I didn't know what David would do, well, I, at the time I didn't know that Templar would accept it, and I didn't know that David would be chosen, you know, would be asked to do it. But, um, but I did, I did imagine that um, an illustrator could add something to it, and that's what I think is fantastic about picture books: is that they appeal to you in all sorts of ways. The words, the rhythm mm -hmm. of the words, the sound of the words, but also the colours. Uh, you know, it's just, I love picture books. I just think that they appeal to children on so many levels and adults. And um, you can look at the picture book without, you know, looking at the words and still get the feeling that of what I wrote. Um, but obviously I do hope the words are important, but, you know. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. How about yourself, David? Um, I... For, for me personally, one of the, I mean, you know, I've, I've loved drawing since, uh, you know, since I was a child, obviously. Um, and I guess that's how I kind of got to know stories was from like draw, cop, copying the, the pictures. And I mean, that's what I always aspire to do is draw a book that will inspire kids to copy my book. <laughs> and, oh, to yeah. that's lovely. And, and I think, um, I don't know, the fact that, you know, that sadness is a scribble, that he is quite quite easy to draw. I, I, I think hopefully that will kind of get kids drawing and get kids to kind of, you know, visualise their own kind of emotions and stuff. And I think that's something that you don't get, or you obviously don't get that in kind of, you know, in novels and, and you know, n books that aren't picture books or don't have too many pictures in them where you can kind of almost be immersed in these, in these pictures and... Um, and like Anne says, you know, if you can kind of, I mean, if you can tell the story without words, then great. But I think the, the magic happens when the kind of words and the pictures yeah. work completely in unison. Yeah. I think yeah. I think we've worked together and kind of found a nice kind of unison yeah. with, with yeah. these yeah. pictures in this one. And I don't know, they, 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 you just get a magic with picture books that you don't get anywhere else, basically. And yeah. that's, that's hopefully that. Yeah, definitely. That's lovely. Uh, well, Tebs on Facebook says, I'm so excited for the release of this. And again, end of January, Tebs, so a good uh, good release date at your local bookstore. Uh, my, my class are huge fans of David. And I just know they will adore this. That's lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very nice to know. 
Yeah, it, and it's nice. It's nice to see your illustrations with with Anne's words as well, because you know the there in the piano is used so much in in primary. I've you know I've seen it everywhere and been a big fan of that. So it's then nice to pet, work with someone with different ideas, isn't it? And Anne, you've taken you know inspiration from a really heartfelt way. So yeah, Th thanks, Tebs, for that lovely lovely point there. Well, it's on to our quick fire fiction time where uh, we create a resource, an educational resource live in the session itself. So let's, uh, let's, shall we do it? Are you, are you two, are you both ready? We're up for this, yes. Great. Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> I told you it was going to be rocky. <laughs> yeah, I'm headbanging a long time. <laughs> I'm going to leave you um, both to um, explain the story and then I'll ask you a few questions about it, which then you can um, play teachers um, back, or, well, I was going to say back in your class, but you can do it for remote learning, of course, as a lovely comprehension task um, task um, for your children to understand ta um, understand sadness, but also engage with lovely text and um, really simply keep them educated during these difficult times. And this will be available on litfunfest.com as well in the future. So check it out there. Okay, over to you both. Um, hello, my name is Anne Booth. Hello, my name is David Litchfield. And we wrote and illustrated a book called A Shelter for Sadness, which I'm going to read the words, and I wrote the words, and David is going to show the pictures, and he illustrated the this book, so he, we've got the right jobs. <laughs> so this book is called A Shelter for Sadness. And that's beautiful papers at the beginning. Lovely. Lovely for sadness. Okay, so this is the first. So this says, sadness has come to live with me and I am building it a shelter. I am building a shelter for my sadness and welcoming it inside. I am giving it a space for it to sit or lie down, to run around or stand still, to curl up very small, to be very, very noisy, very, very quiet or anything in between. That's all the way. In this shelter for sadness, it can turn to the wall or look out through the window in the middle of the night or in the day. The windows will open to let sounds in or close to keep them out. The shelter I will build for my sadness will have light from the sun or from the moon and the stars. But the windows will have curtains that sadness can draw when it wants to and there will be candles or lamps if sadness needs them. Lots and lots of light, or no light at all. Sadness can sit in darkness if it wants to, whatever it feels like. Because this is the shelter for my sadness and it has a right to be there. And I will make my shelter strong so that in winter, sadness will have a safe shelter against the storms. But I will give it a little garden too, so that in spring, birds will come and build their nests and green shoots will peek through the dark earth. In summer, roses will bloom and their scent will steal in under the door and my sadness can open the windows and breathe in and smell them if it wants to. In autumn, it can look out at the trees and cry when the leaves turn red and orange and fall to the ground. Or it can go out and walk through the leaves and hear the sounds they make. 
It can build bonfires and dance around them or sit quietly and watch the flames. Anything it needs to. Sometimes I will visit my sadness in its shelter every day, every hour if needed. Sometimes we will run into each other's arms and hug and cry and talk. And sometimes just sit next to each other saying nothing. Sometimes I will be too busy to visit sadness for a while, but that is okay too. I have built a good shelter for my sadness and it is safe inside and nobody will hurt it. I can visit it whenever I need to, whenever it calls to me. And whenever sadness wants, it can come out of its shelter and hold my hand. And we will look out at the world and discover how beautiful it is together. The end. Oh, and that's the collective hug we needed <laughs> right there. All, all education, come round, come on, come round. <laughs> Uh, that's lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I'm sure the people online are really interested in maybe reading that with their, with their classes. Again, you can um, play this video back on our YouTube channel um, for your class um, tomorrow if you want to, of course, uh, or nitfilmfest.com in the future. And you also stand a chance of winning the book as well. So please like, share or comment on the video for a chance. And the competition ends always at midnight next week, um, next Wednesday. So I'm going to ask you some basic questions, and um, so please give us some uh, give us some truthful answers. Nothing too too delving, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> um, who is who is the boy with? And want to try? Or shall I have a go at this one? Sadness. It's his with his sadness. He's with his yeah. um, feelings. He's with his part of and him. That that's one of the, again, going back to one of the reasons why I love the book is because we don't know too much about the boy, you know, we don't see much of his, we see a house, we don't know if it's his house or not, but, um, you know, we see, we see the sort of little clues of some of the pictures and drawings that he's done in the sadness, um, but we don't know, we don't know what his situation is, and that's one of the things that I love about it is, like I said, you know, kids reading that will will be coming from all different situations. They'll be coming from all different home lives, all different kind of, you know, places. And um, I just love the fact that it, it could be any of them, you know, it could be any of them. Um, it could be something very trivial that, you know, he's had an argument with his mum and dad, so he's gone and built this shelter and uh, he's angry and sad and stuff. <laughs> or, you know, it could be something a lot more, a lot more um, deep and meaningful that's, that's going on in his life. Lovely. Mm. So, yeah, I think we keep that one open and like who the, who the boy is with. Yeah. Yeah. Let the, yeah. Let the reader that one. Yeah, definitely. It's for every child. Every child has sadness. I, I, mm. I think, you know, as David said, it, you know, the world is. I don't think it's fair to say to children, this, these are the best years of your life. Because <laughs> no. um, there's so many things they can't do anything about. So, I think it's okay to be sad. and every every human being has sadness so it doesn't make the joys less but yeah absolutely um can you can you describe the colors on on, on this page we'll, we'll ask a lot about this page because this will actually be in our resource which is lovely so to me the, the colors on that page are, i mean the colors on each of the pages are important but for for me i i really kind of thought about the colors here i wanted there to be a big a big contrast between what's going on oh I'm flip on this side of the book to what's going on on this side of the book you know I wanted this to be quite um muted and subdued I mean there's obviously kind of the leaves are red and there's an autumnal feel to it but then we're almost almost within the picture sort of traveling into summer because the the, the the grass is 
blooming and there's kind of flowers sprouting and stuff. And yeah. I wanted to be very kind of, you know, I wanted you to be able to read the colours on this book almost, or, or on this page um, mm. to kind of get an idea of, 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 of the story or, or what was happening to the boy. Because he is, he is, you know, he's physically moving away from the sadness. Yeah. Uh, he's moving into into a, a fun situation or what looks like a good fun situation where he's going to ride his bike with his friends and there's a go-kart and, you know, there's nothing but fun going on in on yeah. this side of the page. But sadness is still there. Sadness yeah. is still is still there and he will you know he will he will be there to visit and there to kind of talk to if maybe that's my interpretation of the yeah, that, yeah perfect i think <laughs> <laughs> how do you think sadness is feeling inside the shelter at this point um i think sadness feels recognized i don't think sadness feels ignored because he's looking back at sadness i think sadness feels you know, respected, looked after. It's got a lovely shelter. Safe. I think sadness feels yep. safe. Mm. Again, though, it's a, it's another one that you can read into. I think. I mean, there's nothing wrong with seeing that picture and thinking, and you know, saying, "Well, look, sadness looks okay. He's got his shelter. He's he's got." But there's also nothing wrong with seeing that and going, "Well, is sadness going to be upset? Is sadness going to be yeah, sad? Yeah. Is sadness going to be sad? Even more sad that his brain." <laughs> And, you know, gone off with these other these other kids, or you know, I, I think I think that's another one that is I'm, I'm quite happy to be open to interpretation, really. However, people want to want to read into into yeah. how sad this feels. But then you can also look at the boy, and even though there is this fun situation, he still looks a little bit forlorn. Maybe yeah. he's looking back at yeah. sadness. Maybe maybe he is feeling a bit guilty that he's leaving sadness. Yeah, yeah well, I think that that was actually my next question. Yeah, why is the boy looking back at the shelter? <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. I think it's that's why I wrote. Um, sometimes I will be too busy to visit sadness for a while, but that is okay too, because yeah. I think um, sometimes something sad will happen, and we feel like we we're sort of diminishing the sadness or betraying the sadness or denying the sadness if we have a happy day. Yeah. And I think it's important for children to know that it's okay, even when you're grieving, even if someone's died, it's okay to still have fun. You're not letting down. It doesn't mean that you didn't love the person and it doesn't mean that you don't feel sad mm. and it doesn't mean that bad things didn't happen or that you, you know you you won't feel sad again but you're it's okay to go away and have fun you know yeah. mm. okay to feel happy yeah um, you, you 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 say Anne, um in in in, in the writing um, that nobody can hurt the sadness in the shelter um, how how can someone that hurt sadness do you think i think it's saying that it's not there i think not giving it a shelter i think you know denying it hitting it hitting it away or telling it to be quiet you know i think you hurt your sadness you deny that you're sad and then sometimes it will come out in other ways and you'll end up being grumpy or cross or really really angry with people all the time mm. and it's because you've hurt your sadness if you just let yourself recognize that you're sad then you might not get so cross with other people or want to run away from them or you know you can sometimes sadness has to express itself or just be recognized and then it's it's fine it will just stay gently there and it won't ruin everything but um the person who wrote the 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 some something that inspired me to write this book, she was having a terrible time in a war, and she realised that if she didn't accept how sad she was about it, she would get very angry and hate the people that were in the war, and she didn't want to feel feel full of hate. She said, "I want to recognise that I'm sad, but I don't want to become like the people who are being horrible to me. Mm. I don't want to be angry, and I don't want to hate them." So she knew that it was very important for her to recognise that she was sad. Otherwise, she would get really cross um, and, or, you know, it would be something she didn't want to be. Mm, makes a lot Talk, sense. That's another thing, going back to your earlier question about what you want kids to, or, or the, any any readers to take from this. I think talking about your sadness is, like, the best thing you could do. And it goes into what Anne just said there. It's, you know... Your, your sadness can quickly turn into anger. And, and I think if you bury it deep inside, which again is a, is a lot of people's advice, um, that can be quite a bad thing, I think. I think talking about your sadness and really kind of trying to 
think about why you're sad is, yeah. is a good sometimes you don't talk about it sometimes you can feel angry but sometimes you end up not feeling anything mm. because you feel you can feel quite depressed and you don't think you feel anything because you're so busy trying not to feel sad that then you can't let yourself feel happy or all the other feelings that you need to feel and you end mm. up thinking i don't have any feelings at all but that's not true you do have feelings you're just sad maybe you need to have a big cry or as david's pictures are you need to shout or make a lot of noise or run around or curl up but you need to recognize you've got that feeling to let yourself feel all the other feelings because there is room for other feelings you can have be sad and be happy at the same time mm, great advice that's really great and fine fine question really um, what's in the sky in the picture and why is it there so in the sky we have a few things going on basically so we've always got the leaves that are falling from the tree um but we've also uh, very deep in the picture we've got some clouds that are, that are either kind of brewing or i like to think of them as kind of they're going away they're being blown away um because we've also got these lovely bits of sunlight that are coming through um mm. So for me again, it's one of those it's one of those images that you can really read a number of things into. Really, it's like, is is the are the clouds overtaking the sun, or is the sun overtaking the clouds? You know, is <laughs> is, the, is the is the autumn turn? Uh, is is the summer after the autumn, or is the uh, autumn in, into summer? Does that make sense? I don't know. If you know <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Is it changing into basically? And I think that's you know it, it can all be open to interpretation. Um, but yeah, the sky, uh, I mean, on a kind of um, practical sense, what is all going on in the sky is it's a lot of um, a lot of watercolour paint <laughs> um, uh, that I've kind of, because uh, that's how I create, I, I love, I love making skies, I love kind of painting skies, and how I've kind of ended up doing it is just covering uh, sheets of paper in watercolour paints, and I love the way that watercolour paint mm. kind of reacts kind of you know it's especially the way that i use it it's quite hard to control sometimes so you're kind of it's a very kind of natural kind of splatter that happens uh and then i scan that into my computer and overlay them with other watercolor paints that i've created and i, I just like playing around with those textures so so on, on a physical practical level there's lots of paint and and, and me making a mess <laughs> uh, in terms of narrative level it's you know it's it's um, I sometimes think the sky can actually help tell the story as well. Like, what a sky, you know, what's going on in the sky is actually a really good narrative tool when you're kind of trying to tell a story in a picture, yeah. I think. Yeah, you know, really, really really that picture. Yeah. 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 You know, the colour of the sky, you know, I think that's a good way of uh, making symbolism in your in your stories. Yeah. And the pink, David, the pink could be, could that be sunset or sunrise or, you know, it's all exactly. sorts of questions. And I like the, the little city at the, um, mm. the, you know, the buildings out in the distance. That's really interesting. Yeah, well, ah, that's, a, uh, yeah, that's another good one. I sort of wanted that to, again, talking about symbolism and maybe maybe I read too much into, into the drawings, but I kind of think that's part of being an artist. You, you kind of put these little clues in the images and stuff and i just sort of thought that that's kind of a sign that life you know it's going on life is happening you know it might yeah. be this you know we've got a lot of drama going on here in this in this location um but there's kind of a big picture going on here that you know life will carry on and life you know and i'm not saying that this boy's going to grow up and become a big city banker or anything you know he's <laughs> not <laughs> but it's just sometimes nice to kind of i, I I think that kind of stems from my childhood. You know, I, I lived in quite a small town just outside of Bedford. And I always remember we at the end of our road, you know, we lived on quite a quiet road where not much happened. Um, but at the end of our road was a was a, a motorway. And you can kind of see around the motorway in towards kind of, you know, all these kind of different towns and different, you know, he and it headed off to London and thing. The we couldn't see London, but the motorway. <laughs> I used, to, I used to always some, sometimes walk up there, you know, and it'd be quite dark, you know, in the winter, and you'd see all the sparkling lights that didn't look anything like your road or what was past your yeah. road. It looked quite exciting, and that that always kind of sort of made me realise, you know, that, that the world was a bigger place than just Harter Road in Kempston. It was, you know, <laughs> there, was, 
there was yeah. more going on in the world than, than than what was happening in in my street and yeah. there's a little bit of that there i think in in that drawing yeah. Yeah, and he spent the book mostly in isolation with just his feeling, just his sadness, hasn't he? So the picture, you know, him meeting his friends and then the city in the background, there's a, there's a reconnection there, isn't it? Yeah. So the book's yeah. a lot about processing, isn't it? And giving time to process sadness, which I really like. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining. It's been a real pleasure to have you both on tonight. Um, oh. what, are you working on at this? Well, the book first is out at the end of January, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I think it's the 21st. 21st. No, the 21st. 21st. Yeah. Not, not, not so long. So it's very for anyone to buy it because all the shops are closed. But, um, I mean, they'll be online. Do support your independent bookshops. And yes. um, they often can sell them, you know, if you ring them, even if they're, they're closed or and they have online websites and things. So, so yeah. don't just think about the great big, big A. Think about some um, little <laughs> independent bookshops as well. Or, or Waterstones, or you know, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty. Uh, well, thank you, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and and for for talking about a really important topic. It's been a real pleasure to have you both on. Okay, oh. thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks See you very both. much. Bye bye. Well, that was great. That was really interesting, wasn't it? Um, and so um, appropriate to what we're thinking about at the minute with, with sadness for so many children. So great book. I do recommend it. Um, it's fantastic. Don't forget there's a giveaway as well. So please like, share or comment on the video and you stand a chance of winning this beautiful book that isn't even out yet. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? To actually support your children with their emotions during this difficult time. A shelter for sadness. Um, on we have a double whammy this week as well, as on Thursday, we'll be looking at Welsh folklore with Catherine Fisher on Thursday at 10.30 in the morning. So we're going, we are going to be doing a morning session. So bring your class along uh, because we will be looking at um, myths and legends and tales and talking about them, as well as creating a resource uh, that you can do live with your class. And also don't forget that we have lots and lots of beautiful resources online at litprofess.com. We've been producing the quick fire right challenges, especially for you and your class and home learning. We've released many of these projects for free so your children can learn about how the world works with a simple video before writing about it themselves using the quick fire questions. We've also included lots of other activities to keep your children engaged around this topic so you could teach this in one afternoon, you could teach it remotely if your bubble has burst, or across a whole week's worth of lessons. And finally, we're hosting many of the Reading Rocks review projects for free this year. They're designed to inspire a love of reading across your school by simply reading a book, using the Reading Rocks review project to review a book, and then create a video review of that. They include planning, whiteboard slides, supporting resources, and videos to inspire a love of writing and reading in your class. So check everything out online at lidfilmfest.com. And that's it for me tonight. Um, oh, Carly, um, Emily says, thank you. Thank you, Emily, for joining us. And 